This is just a short screencast to demonstrate how easy it is to produce really professional looking documents in Word such as you might need for coursework submission. Now if you want to follow the, uh, the steps yourself you can download the base document from Blackboard. I'm using Microsoft Word 2010 um, so if you're using a, an earlier version of Word you may find that some of the steps I'm demonstrating might be slightly different but all of the functions are available on earlier versions and what we're looking at here is a very simple document it happens to be about uh, reusing old buildings but for the purposes of this screencast the content of the document is actually irrelevant I've just taken a, a simple document it's uh, four or five pages long uh, it's got a list of references at the end uh, and we're going to carry out uh, various sort of formatting tasks to this base document. The first thing I want to do is to change the font type because the font that we see here is a rather old fashioned looking font called Courier New. Um, so I want to select the, all of the text in the document, which I can do so very simply by simply going to select over here the, on the down arrow, clicking select all. That has now selected all the text in the whole document. Um, Go to the font selection. I'm going to choose a font called Calibri, which I happen to personally like. I think it's a nice, clean, modern looking font, but you can choose any font that uh, you have a preference for, um, provided, of course, that it does look reasonably professional. So we've now changed the font type throughout the whole document. Um, what we're now going to do is we're going to insert a couple of pages right at the start of the document. One of them is going to be for a table of contents and the other one is going to be a title page. So we'll place the cursor right at the beginning of the document. We'll go to the insert tab and initially we're just going to put in a page break. Uh, what that has done is actually just inserted a blank page um, at the position of the cursor. So uh, we're going to put our Subsequently, we're going to put our, um, our table of contents in there, but we'll come back to that later on. I'm now going to put in a cover page, and again, still on the Insert tab, we select Cover Page, and we go to the down arrow. There's a whole range of different cover page styles there. You can select whichever one that you think is appropriate. I'm just going to go for a very simple one called a steer, um, and that has entered the... Uh, the cover page at that position. Um, you can adapt the information that's already there. You can see that I've already been playing around with this cover page. Some of the information is already there, but uh, you can, for example, put your name in. Um, you can adjust the title. I'm just going to simplify the title and just call it uh, Reusing Old Buildings. And if you wanted to put in additional information beneath the title, you could. But for the purposes of this demonstration, I'm just going to delete that and leave it blank. So there's a very simple cover page. As I said, we'll come back to the contents page uh, at a later date. Because before we do that, we have to um, make some adjustments to our paragraph headings. And we're going to do that by using a function called styles. And you may well have seen on the menu bar on Microsoft Word, this whole section related to styles. And I don't know if you've ever used it before, but it's a really useful function uh, for formatting a document. First thing I'm going to do is get rid of that heading there because we've now put in a cover page, so we don't actually need that title there. But throughout the document, there are a series of paragraph headings. And I would like to differentiate those with a different font and different style. Now what I can do is simply highlight one of the headings and simply select uh, the first heading style from the menu bar. So I, if I select heading one, then uh, it changes the font and the size of the text. Um, but I don't particularly like that style. Um, so I want to change it to something which I consider to be more appropriate. So whilst it's still highlighted, I'm going to change it to match the rest of the document. I'm going to change it to Calibri. I'm going to keep it as a bold font and I'm going to increase the size to size 12. Now I think that's a, a much more appropriate uh, paragraph heading for my document. So what I can now do is change the uh, the style of heading one to match the style that I've just created. And I do that simply by right-clicking on the highlighted text, going down to styles, 
and selecting this option here, update heading one to match selection. So by doing that, I've now effectively created a new style and it is called heading one. And I can now go through the rest of the document, select each of the paragraph headings that I want to change to that style and simply click on heading one in each case. So bear with me as I work my way through the document. Um, <clears throat> just take a few seconds to run through all of the other paragraph headings that I want to change. This one there, the conclusion, and finally the references. Okay, so that's changed all my main paragraph headings, but I would also like to use some subheadings. So again, if we find the first one of those, and the first one occurs at this point here, I'd like to uh, give that a subheading style. So again, I could just select heading two, but I don't really think that that's an appropriate style. So I'm going to change it to what I think is appropriate. Uh, firstly, I want to get rid of the um, the highlighting, no color there. Um, I'm going to remove the bold. I'm going to change the font to Calibri to match the rest of the, rest of the text, and I'm going to make it italic. So. Having done that, again, I right click on it, select styles, this time update heading two to match selection. And I've now created a new style called heading two. So again, please bear with me while I just go through the rest of the document, update my subheadings to heading two. And there are several of them. So again, please bear with me. And technical economic I think that's about it so again I've now created a series of subheadings and already the document is starting to look a little bit more professional one other thing I want to do um, you'll notice um, in one section of the document um, in why do buildings become obsolete or redundant I have got a series of points um, I want to make those bullet points, and I'm sure you're already familiar with this function, but I can just highlight the items that I want as bullet points. Select the bullet point tool in the main menu bar, and that has uh, individually identified each of those points as a bullet point, and I think that makes the document much more readable. So again, uh, that's another aspect of formatting which has increased the readability of the document. Now at this point I think we're going to enter our table of contents. So we'll go to the second page in the document, we'll insert, insert our cursor at the point at which we want to uh, make our table of contents available and we go to the references tab uh, and over there on the left hand side you can see table of contents and if we click on the down arrow you'll see that there are a number of built-in automatic table of contents formats um, and you'll see that they are based on the heading styles that already appeared in the main menu so if we just select that first one then clicking on it automatically inserts the table of contents based on the, the paragraph headings that we used earlier on. So this is a really useful tool. You can see each of our main paragraph headings together with indented the subheadings as well. So um, that has, has really been helpful in rather than having to go through and, and manually produce a table of contents, it's already done for us. And the great thing about this tool is that if you subsequently edit the document and the page numbers change or that you change some of your uh, heading titles or perhaps you add in some new content then all you have to do is right click in the middle of the table and select the option to update the field click on that and any changes you will have, you make will have been automatically incorporated in your table of contents so a really useful function there okay the next thing I want to do is to uh, to actually add in a uh, an image to the middle of the document. I'm just going to show you one example. Um, normally when people want to insert an image they tend to position the cursor roughly where they want the image. Uh, go to insert, select picture and then choose the the file which they want to insert. But 
Um, that is a very sort of inflexible way of putting an image into a document. So I want to show you a, a, an alternative uh, approach, which involves using a text box. So on the same insert menu, we select text box. If the, click on the down arrow. One of the options right down the bottom is draw text box. And I'm just going to draw a text box roughly where I want my image to appear. Now immediately you might think, well, what's the use of that? Because all that's done is created a, a blank box and it's actually hidden the text. But if you look now at the menu bar, one of the options there is says wrap text. We click on the down arrow and select tight. Then we've now created a box where, whereby the text floats around it. So wherever we move that box to, the text will move um, around the box accordingly. So we can open up that box, we can resize it, we can make it smaller or larger, um, whatever we want to do, we can position it exactly where we want it. We then click within the box to insert the cursor, but rather than putting text into the box, we're simply going to insert a picture. So we go back to our insert tab, click on insert picture, we select our file from the stored on our computer. I've got a file here called disused building image, click on that, and now we can resize that file. We can really do whatever we want with it. And wherever we now we move the, um, the text box, the, the, the text floats around the image. So I think that's a much more helpful way of putting an image into a, a document. And if we put the cursor down there on the bottom right hand corner of the image, go underneath the image, we can actually add a title just call it disused building. Uh, we can change the font to match the rest of the text, Calibri, make it a small font to distinguish it. Let's make it italics as well. But that now is a, uh, a really simple way of adding an image into a document without uh, having to reformat all the text. OK, the last thing I want to do is to put in a header and a footer into the document. So we click pretty much anywhere within the main body of the document. Go to Insert. Firstly, click on Header, and we're presented with a whole range of options. These are standard header types, and there's loads to choose from. I'm just going to choose a simple one. In this case, we'll call uh, it's called Alphabet. Um, the title has been automatically inserted, but as you recall, I actually changed the title of the document simply to reusing old buildings. Um, I actually think that font size is a little bit too large. I think it dominates the page too much. So I'm going to highlight the text, um, change the font to match the rest of the document, and make it much smaller. I'm going to bring it down to an 8. So there's our header. Uh, it doesn't now dominate the page so much. The same sort of thing for a footer, insert again, select footer, select the same style of footer, alphabet, um, and we can add in information there, such as perhaps the, the author's name, or if we wanted to, we could put a date in there. Um, it automatically generates page numbers. Once again, we can change the font type. Let's get it to match the rest of the document, reduce the size again, and there we have uh, a really effective header. If we double click back in the main document, we can now see it. Um, and I think that now the document is starting to look really professional. Um, and if we go to File and Print, then you can see the sort of print preview. Um, and as we scroll through the document, there's our table of contents, um, formatted text across several pages, the image appears there. And finally, we've got our list of references. So I hope that's shown some of the, the main functions that are available. You can see that they're really simple. Uh, download the document itself. You really just have to experiment with all the different options yourself. But uh, uh, please do try and uh, find an easy way of, of producing much more simple and professional looking documents. Thanks.